Yes, sir. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna gonna go for it. Got a horse show coming up in Belfast, Tennessee. So uh, that'll be this weekend. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Well, you do your deal, and then we we got some good stuff today. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235. We'll provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, world grand champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000, or select amateur show pleasure world grand champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition, and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these world grand champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live bull guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. I fell in love with Tennessee from the second that I saw it. From the beautiful rolling hills to the beautiful rivers and streams, the ecosystem and the wildlife are awesome here. But it needs constant care, and that means picking up litter and trash every single chance you get. It's totally polluting the ecosystem, totally polluting the natural resources, and it's a big hazard for our local wildlife. Please join NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and join me in keeping Tennessee beautiful and keeping this part of our great legacy. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All right, we only got one announcement, and that is Robert Cortner will be judging the Belfast Lions Club show this week. You can call Nancy Lynn Green, 931-993-3187, and go have a good time showing horses. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a lot going on. But before we start into this, I'm going to read something here to everybody. This was what the USDA put out about the inspection area and what they wanted everybody to do. Any inappropriate behavior, including but not limited to touching of USDA staff, remember that, touching USDA staff, touching hair, ponytails, buttocks, hugging, are an in inappropriate comments by DQPs and any other person engaged in inappropriate behavior will be considered harassment of a federal employee and treated as a criminal act under the Horse Protection Act. So here's what I say to that. 
you want me to respect you, you got to respect me. And right now, a lot of things going on in the inspection area and not by the DQPs or not by the custodians of the horse is being done by the USDA. And one lady in particular is going above and beyond uh, to cause or create or intimidate or provoke someone to say something or do something. Yes. And I don't know if she's doing it on her own or if someone with USDA has told her to do it or if maybe her boss has told her. Maybe the Secretary of Agriculture has said, hey, they can't do nothing about it. Get them to make a move. Get them to say something to you. But when it comes to this uh, putting your hands on and things like this, uh, I would I would think that it, it if you want me to respect you, you ought to respect, respect me. me. That's right. So we're going to start with this. We're going to start with an inspection. So first of all, I'm going to show you the inspection of a saddlebred horse. Now this is the USDA's way of inspecting a saddlebred compared to how they will inspect us. Now there's one of the ladies that causes a whole lot of problems yes, she does. in our industry. And here she is, they're inspecting another one. I mean, it's very obvious that the horse doesn't want you touching his feet. But those horses can show. Now I'm going to show you one, and I'm going to show you the way that a USDA official, VMO, acts towards a custodian of a horse in the ten Tennessee walking horse shows. Let's show that. Yeah, she's walking the cone. Horse moving good, walking good. And the lady that's watching her sitting over there with a gray vest. She's already put one in timeout. And uh, when she gets ready to inspect this, and she's going to put another one over there. Now, see, she's already walked home. Now I want you to do this. Now watch. She's still not satisfied. So she tells her to do this. Close the gate. That's the class. See, that's, that's going up I know. beyond. I know. Love. I mean, it just, that, that's, it's too much. That's her trying to upset the lady leading the horse. And see, she's got this guy now. She's putting him in timeout. So here we go. Now you got three horses right there that she got tied up. Right, but if, I want you to, if you time her doing this. Now that, that's the thing about it is, if you time her doing the inspection process, you will find that she really goes way overboard. It takes her more time to inspect this horse. Matter of fact, it's more than twice the time that another VMO inspects a horse. But watch what all goes on during it. And I mean, here's the horse. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, she turned this horse down because it moved. You know, the so thing that gets said, me, Jerry, is this. You watched the first video you put out there with the saddlebred horse. Right. I mean, that horse is obvious, moving his feet, snatching his feet. You can't even see this horse move his feet at all. No. Right here. So I don't understand if, he, if to me, if, if that's not targeting or, or whatever, not, you know. Well, what, what, what this horse does. I mean, this, this horse is, is all over the young lady that is holding it there, and she pushes his head around. But now, the VMO, she's over there. She's still inspecting. Yeah. Still inspecting. Now, the... USDA put out a video of how thorough they were and how fast they inspected horses, which is a ball-faced lie. 
But you can see right there, she inspecting Rome. She got her hands in front of the horse, checking the front, and still squeezing the back of that horse at the same time. At the same you know, time. You, now, now watch what she does. Now th this, is, this is what really gets me, is the way she does this. And, but she wants us to treat her with respect. Now she's inspecting. Keep watching because it's coming. But that horse is it obviously doesn't care what she's doing. That's right. In no pain at all. Looks back there and says, What are you doing, lady? And she was even stop, wipes her hands off. But it, what she is doing, she's taking way too long to inspect a horse if all she's looking for is a violation. Yeah. Now, if she's trying to create one, it's going to be a little bit different. Plus the fact you can't see what she's doing, but people that was there know. Now, watch. She's going right up under the horse, and now she's getting in, in this lady's face because she stuck her head under the horse. Not the, It'd be different if, if the horse had reached around and done something, which it didn't. She puts her head up under the horse. Yeah. And now she's chewing this lady out, and she's trying to tell her, I'm holding the horse the way you tell. Now, see, she, you see, see that? Okay. All right. Now, that's assault. That's assault. That's right. If, if it's assault for us to even look at them, it's assault for her to put her, her hands, hands on, on that, that horse. Lady. That's right. You are exactly right on that. Now, she tried her best to intimidate her to get her to do something. And it's a crying shame that the USDA sends people into horse shows with this kind of attitude and this kind of mentality and then want us to treat them like they're somebody. Excuse me. It's about time show managers told the USDA that they could either inspect horses according to the HPA or they could go home. If we got to follow the law, they should have to follow the law too. And she doesn't do a very good job of she following don't do the law. Matter of fact, she goes way beyond the law, even breaks the law. You know, sometimes, Jerry, and you know, and I don't want to put my foot in my mouth, but sometimes the people that do an inspection, you might need to do a background check on them. Well, that's true. Just see where, and see, where and they, see, and where see they, where they are from. and what they are. But right now, they're not supposed to interfere with the flow of the show. But she's got two guys in time out over there that's got to show their horse. That's right. They want you to bring the horse up three classes prior to the class you're going to show, which means that you got a time limit in there that you're going to have to get the horse ready. And they've got them standing over there in time out so she can do her thing. And I'm gonna just tell you, I know exactly how that young lady is holding that horse feel. Yeah. I have been there and done that. And I know it's a big feeling when that woman, the one that's doing the checking, she's, when she picks a horse, she got a agenda to turn a horse down. She does. If you look at the number of horses she inspects versus the number of horses she turns down, you're gonna see that the majority of them get to do what that and, young lady and, does and you cannot tell me that every time she touches a horse that it is out. And then they say that, like that. Then they say that she's the best one. Yeah. They said that she was the best one she's out the, there. She's the best one out there checking out all the VMOs. She's the best one well, that's out there checking. We're going to see some more stuff that she did. Now, we saw her inspect, all right? Now we're going to see a veterinarian, which is, a, to me, the soul is, is perfect. Now here he is, he, he's fixing to inspect the horse. Walk the cones.
you're going to see a big difference in the way he inspects a horse and the way she does. Well, that's what you call experience and doing his job. And that's, right. what, he's, and that's what he's doing, his job. Yeah, but he, here's the big catch with this. He's doing his job and being honest in the that's way right. he inspects a horse. Why ain't he inspecting right now? How, many, how long has it been since you've seen Dr. DeSoe at a horse show inspecting? It's been a while. It's been a while. That's right. Because he ain't stringent enough, or he's not crooked enough, or he won't overdo what he's supposed to do. He will not find horses out that are not out. That's right. So we don't have no use for you. We have to put up a front, and we have to prove that all these horses are bad, even if we have to create the, uh, that's the right. problem. Which, and to show you about the... Uh, the difference, I'm going to show you a video now that the USDA did. They did this one showing how thorough they are on inspecting horses. So let's watch that one. You recognize that lady? Yeah. Now here's the way she's going to inspect this horse for the video. And for everybody that don't, you see where she's palpating? The way she's doing it, that's the way it's supposed to be done. However, this particular VMO is the one we caught in video her, putting the tip of her thumb down into the pocket to cause the horses to move. The same lady. But now this is what they tell everybody. They want everybody to believe yes. that they do when they go to a show. And those of us who are there know it's a lie. Yeah, the It's exactly a bald-faced right. lie. Now, we got one other thing. If they can't find a problem with the horse, and they did this to you, yes, then they will create it. And if it's not an HPA violation, they really don't care. Their whole concept is to disrupt the show and see that you're not showing your horse, causing problems with your customer and everybody else. So this particular filly, look at her feet. She didn't move, so they decide that that field scar right below her knee, that that's, we're gonna call it out because of that. And what was it and she said? When the DQP wouldn't do it far, she turned around and says, well, I'll write that horse up for inflammation. That's right. I mean, that's how corrupt our VMOs have gotten. And th this is video proof. I didn't make this stuff you, up. But the same thing, the same lady on all them violations, she's the same one that, that, that called all them horses out. Yeah. And said that the same horses when she inspect on the the saddlebreds, they can jump jerk. They, they, I mean, it makes no difference. Go ahead and show. Go ahead and show. That's right. So yeah. I don't think a horse is a horse regardless. If no, you no. pick his feet up and you get a response and you think you're supposed to disqualify the horse, I don't care if it's a quarter horse, saddlebred, walking horse, you should do all of them the same. But you only going to pick a certain breed of horse to do it to? That's not right. Well, there's one thing I want to tell everybody. Be sure to video your inspections because if you don't, you have no proof, you have nothing, you're out there by yourself. But this video like this right here that shows how corrupt and how out of bounds the USDA is, I guess we better take a commercial break. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. 
folks. This is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. You know, Jerry, I, I, I've said this a lot. Uh, the, U, the BMOs, they get in there and they do a lot. But there, there is a veterinarian's creed that pledge that they do, just like a doctor. Yeah. And to me, when these BMOs go out there and start creating problems, rather than being honest, they should be held to the same standards as they would be if they were in a clinic. Yeah. Now, you know, when I get ready for my horse to be shown, I have it inspected by an equine veterinarian to make sure. The, when that filly, when they turned it down, they took it to a clinic. Yes. Had it x-rayed, checked everything to verify that it was a field scar. scar yeah. I don't see why the BMOs, since they take such pride in their ability that if they pull something like this, they ought to be held to the same standards as I would hold a veterinarian that told me my horse was perfectly all right when it wasn't. Or if he said I had a major problem with my horse and needed all this treatment when I really didn't. Yeah. In other words, I'm saying malpractice is malpractice and a damn lie is a damn lie. You are right about that. Period. You know, Jerry, and I don't understand this. People know that the USDA and the way that they act, especially certain ones, going to be overbearing and all that stuff. So you know a man going to bring a horse up there, a person going to bring a horse up there that's in his heart and his feeling that he's going to be able to get through. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I'm not talking for everybody. I'm talking for myself personally. A couple weeks ago, I took a horse up there to help support the council show. Yeah. And I took a horse up there to inspection, and I have no doubt in my mind that this horse, this horse was, it was perfect. Mm. I go to the DQP, everything's fine. She didn't even see. It. There's another guy that's watching that set, that pulls me over, and made me and, and and got her to come and check my horse. Mm. She picks the horse foot up and had it stretched out behind him, and all he did move his shoulder up because he had pulled too far behind him. She never did push his feet or whatever. When she did push on his feet, he never did move. But mm -hmm. she tells me that she turns me down because she got some reaction when she first picked his foot up. Now, if you put his, pick a horse's foot up and you got it stretched out and he's uncomfortable, he going to raise his foot, move his feet to well, get comfortable. Anybody is. That's right. But that's, that's what I'm saying. When people take their horses up there, they need to be videoed. You when exactly right. she takes right. that horse's foot, and pulls it way back behind her, or some of them get up and they'll pull that horse's foot out to the left or the, I mean, they do things to cause a problem, and then they want to point the finger at us like we're causing the problem. It's kind of like when they hired a retired FBI agent to investigate us, and then he says, well, I investigated, but they're not the problem. Your inspectors are the problem. Well, we don't need you no more, because that ain't what we want to hear. Well, my my thing is this: the DQPs check every horse that goes in that ring. That's a fact. They pick and choose whatever horse they want to check. So that's to it. me, I, now, the, the VMO picks and chooses. You, you pick, yeah, VMO pick and choose the horses that they want to check. Yeah. So you know, you can't tell me that they, you got certain people that they want to check regardless on what horse they bring through there. Well, yes, that's the only reason they want to the entry forms, they can go down through there and they can say, well, we're going to do this one, we're going to get this one, we're going to get this one. And I'll look them 
any of them in the eye and tell them that's what they're doing, they need to put them on a lie detector. Test. That's right. Let them let them step there and lie. My thing is this: if you ever get them in court, how many of them going to lie for the government? How many of them? How many of the guards? Think about that, because the guards are with them. Yeah. The guards know what they do. How many of them are going to lie to protect somebody that's not being that is really being illegal? Yeah. Now I know that the walking horse industry we have problems. I know that, but they want to to accuse everybody of being guilty when it's not everybody, it's a hand-picked few. And I'm all for them getting the ones that are definitely guilty, but when they have to create the problem, that's not guilt, that's falsifying evidence. That's telling a lie. That's being unprofessional. There's your penal code. When you do it, every one of you that have done it needs to be charged. And I'd love to see you get the 20 years. It says, does not, it does say in prison, not more than 20. Yeah. If I could put them in there for more than 20, I'd put them in there for more than 20. Because what they're doing is trying to destroy a culture based on a lie and what they saw 50 years ago. They cannot find the horse today that the Horse Protection Act was written for. They can't. So what do they do? They create it. I uh, seen a horse that had a girt rub, and it yeah. wasn't. And they and they this turned they, they, they turned the horse down. Well, they had one that stepped on itself. They turned. They gave it a violation because evidently he intentionally stepped on himself. Yeah. Or the trainer intentionally made him step on himself. That's how out and deranged they have got. And they they walk around like we know it all. And really and truly, evidently their ponytail smacked them upside the head one time too many or something because the, what they're doing is, is totally illegal and, and it, it's not right, no matter what they say. It's and not you know, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna say all of them ain't the same way, but you got a, some of them. You got a few of them that go overboard. Well, you got two that really go overboard. You got another one that for a bit did, and then she got to where she could really see the facts. Yeah. And you have got some of the BMOs that have left because they will not stoop to the level that these others are stooping to. Yes. And DeSoe, I wa I've watched him inspect. He, he's honest, he's thorough, but right now he's not being able to inspect. So I'm, I'm wondering why he can't inspect. I remember they had a, a, a veterinarian come one year and after this was when a friend of mine was Mitchell Butler, he was mm -hmm. over the DQPs. And uh, I asked him, I said, that guy right there is not a regular VMO. I said, he's a veterinarian, isn't he? He said, yep, I said, he's an equine vet. I watched him inspect, man was great. Next day, he wasn't there no more. Yeah. Evidently, he didn't turn down enough horses. And that that is the thing that bothers me, is that you want someone to do something, but you want them to be illegal. Yeah. And they can't say it's not illegal, because I mean, just to, just watching them. And that's why they send that one woman all the time, because she get more numbers than any of them that's out there. And I mean, and to me, I, that's just not right. Well, it's not right because she knows what she's going to do. People know that if she touches a horse, she's going to turn it down. I have not seen her pass one. Now, she may have. I may have slipped one by without me seeing. But when I get a chance to go watch her inspect, I watch her inspect, and I video her a lot. And every time I have videoed her, I've seen her do things that were dishonest, unethical. And accusing people of doing something that she don't know that they done yeah. it or not. Well, what was it? She said you blistered the horse, the horse with yeah. a field scar. Lady, we don't even blister horses. That, that shows how much she, she That's what I'm saying. God. So, I mean. So, but it, it, I don't know. I, I just. Uh, I've reached the point in my life that if if I were a show manager 
I would tell them when they get there, as long as you inspect by the Horse P Protection Act, you're free to do. But the first time you step out of line, I'm going to have you removed from the premises. Period. It, it doesn't. Because you got to have guidelines. You got to have. You got that. to. You got to have honesty. You got to have ethical behavior, and you don't need to be trying to provoke anybody into being something that they don't want to be. Yeah. If they're being nice, let them be nice. Let's go to Columbia. Boy, they had a good show. They did have a good Even show Even though Columbia. the USDA was there doing their normal thing, Slim and Hot was walking Yes. Off. Robert Dorch, Slim and Hot, your amateur four-year-old stallion winner. We right around the corner from the celebration. All these horses is trying to get their spot at the celebration. What kind of is they a contender or pretender? <laughs> it's a nice horse right here. It, it really is. Real good. More nice. It's a good horse. Robert does a good job. He does. He that, does. He does a good job. Something good. It done. But there's a hidden gem in Tanner Birch for Shane Porterfield, four-year-old Marion Gildan reserve winner. Yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with that no, right there. He, he bought that for his granddaughter. That horse that got, got that kind of gate for yep. a kid to show and stuff like yep. that. Yeah. Sure does. It's very smooth, easy. Shaking his head. Yeah, get it done and yeah. go on with it. Oh, right no. there. Oh, this, this horse here is, is something else now. She had everybody buzzing, didn't she? Yeah. And that's a, that's a big rascal. I tell you, you don't hardly see him do that too much no more. No. no. That right there, you, you couldn't ask for nothing no better. That is just getting it done. Just big, beautiful, and flat walking, going to it. He remind me of a, of, of a beautiful Cadillac right there. <laughs> a big old Cadillac. Yeah. Right there, Cousin Bob. That's another good horse right there. I tell Real you what, Shane, Shane bought that horse. He 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 uh he was planning on taking. He is. He won this weekend on. Yeah. That's a nice horse. Real nice horse. Tanner does a good job. Tanner now. does he, a real good job. He, he's a hard worker at it now. Now that's what it takes. You have to stay at it. Yeah. Stay up to it. Keep going. And right here, I love this boy. Now that that right there is a flat wall. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I love that wall. Everything's just so precise. Yep, just steady. Everything's in sync on him right there. That's it. He is getting it done. Molly, Molly does real good too. Now she does a great job of showing. That horse that have a bunch of blue ribbons too up under his belt. Oh, oh, oh. He's won his share, big time. Yep. But I'm glad to see Molly in the saddle. Mm -hmm. the truth, I really am. He, that, that's one thing that uh, Formac is good good at. They put a lot of amateurs in the saddle. And right here, is, this, this, this is a professional. Oh yeah. Amateur. <laughs> that's, that's Eli, it. now I tell you, he he loves them horses. It's the medalist in Eli Cunningham. He, uh, if there's a horse show, Eli's coming. Mr. Wilson gonna have to build him another shed for all the blue ribbons and the roses that he's been winning. Come about it. Gonna get a bunch of them, have to get a bunch of them shadow boxes. Yeah. Well, 
I can flat ride. He man. could ride. He does a good job. Honor good job. Right there, honor and remember Dan Waddell. You open the specialty championship. I really love this horse. They say he's breeding quite a few now, too. I'm gonna say he'd be a good breeding stud horse. I think he will too. He's got he's got everything that you would want. He's yeah. got confirmation, he's got the size. He, and, and all of his everything is fluid about him. He's yeah. real steady. Good horse right there. And Man. Just bum nice. I know Kim Lewis just loves him. Yeah. Right here is the Paddock Master and the Master Kenny Smith. <laughs> Kenny's a piece of work, but oh, he, he is something else. Super a really good, good guy. guy. Yep. And this amateur owned and trained. I ought to give him that picture I got upstairs of the Paddock for the thoroughbred. Uh huh. That's a nice horse right there. Yeah, he is. Well, Kenny got something he'd fall back on if his stores ever mess up. <laughs> he can say, well, I'll just go train a horse. The horse, yeah. Right there, my honeybee. Mark my words. This is, the, we got some great mares. Oh, yeah. Right here is one of them. She's up in that, that, not, that top notch. Oh, yeah. This one is going to keep moving forward, buddy, because she is, she has got it, man. She really does. My honeybee. I like the way she tucks that yeah. head and, and just gets in there smooth and gated. Good, real good. Compact, but it, yeah, I'm getting her done. Give her a nice round of applause as she leaves the show ring. Beach Bum Bruce. Right there, Beach Bum Bruce and Bob Roach. That's another nice, nice young horse right there. Oh, you like that because of a mare. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, Bob I like Bob. <laughs> Bob says that's all right. <laughs> he knows he's got to I tell you, Mr. Bob is a nice guy. I see him this weekend. I mean, always got a smile on his face, always. Oh, yeah. A real oh, super guy. Beach, Bob Bruce. I told him this weekend, I said he needed his sister with him, so you might as well come pick her up. That's it. <laughs> That is real nice. That horse. is a nice horse. Bob's had some Bob real good Adcock. horses. Honored in Texas, Bob Adcock, fifteen over winner. As, you know, you talking about the main tickling your nose right there now. That's what that is. Is that hey. main right up all in your face. And you stick your head over there to the side so you can see around. Yeah. Coming down the north rail. That's a nice horse, big horse too. Yes, he is. He's huge. Yeah. And you see them knees coming over the rail and his feet come right there at the rail. Right That's there. it. Right here, Switchblade and L.A. Joe Jacobs. I, I knew this was coming. Yep. You know, she works on weights and everything, wanting to get stronger and stronger. She's got a, she, she has got that mentality that I am going to be the best one way or the other. Oh, yeah. And she she got, works at it. She's she got his to, number now. Yeah, she's willing to sacrifice. That means a lot. A lot yeah. of people don't know it, but I mean, it means a lot to these kids willing to work and learn. Especially being her age. Yes and being focused, so focused on that right there. Virginia Stewart and I had lunch and I was talking to her about Allie Joe and I would tell her, I said, you watch what she does and she pays attention to everything yeah. that's going on around her. There she on a horse, she's watching the way the temple and the nails mm -hmm. in and everything. She doesn't just let it float. I mean, she 
down there looking. All right, let's go to the youth jamboree. It was a, it was a good one. Mystic Jazz and Allie Jo Jacobs. Right there, something there. Now that, yeah, that's another thing. Right there, she is doing the model class. That night, she showed in the model, the medallion, and performance. And that's what I'm she, saying. She For her to model. change, you know, yeah. horses like that, you know, different horses. I mean, you, a kid there got a, a niche for this horse business now. Well, I'm going to tell you, that lady standing there on the phone. Oh, yeah. She has a lot to do with it. Oh, she does. Laurie Toon can flat train. I mean, she's a good trainer all the way around. But she's got this horse to where Allie Joe, a little eight-year-old girl, can control it. Yeah. Tell me that ain't training. Mystic Jazz. The country right here's a country lineman and B.B. Beasley for Beth Beasley. That's a good horse. That is a good horse. B.B., she does a real good job. I mean, they, them girls are super. I heard they come up with a new cookie. Yeah. I told them, let me try it first before we let you. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they'll be good, I'm sure. Yeah. But I would imagine Greg done try. Yeah. Hey, Chris Heinemann. Chris Heinemann. She likes them horses now. She really does. And Tommy and Nancy Mills likes the way she shows Yeah. Them. Jose's desperate man. This is one that Tommy picked up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nancy told me, said Tommy was real proud. There he is. He's on the rail. Yeah, he's hollering. <laughs> Tommy and got a real nice place out there on 231. Oh, he's a real nice place. He, uh, they're doing a lot of work to it. Chris, I mean, she rides them horses. She sits up on that horse, presents him very well. You can get it done now. Yeah. Right here, yakety yak. Uh, matter of fact, uh, James is sending you a bill for half that victory pass. Yeah, I'm gonna I, tell I him he. Him, I told him he'd have to bill you. <laughs> I told him when he bought this horse, he was gonna have to pay me the rest of the money that he owed me for it. Yeah. Because he won. Well, he, he he's a winner, all right. Yeah, he's a winner now. He's that's a good horse right there. Eli's done doing a real good job with that horse right there. That's the first time he ever showed him. No, they, well, I told him, I said, you did pretty good first time out on that yeah. horse, big boy. And he did. That was a nice little class horse. It was. But now, that horse right there, I watched him out there at the barn when y'all had him. And uh, Alan said, said, all we got to do is get him to go to the ring. I said, well, you got the rider. Yeah. To John O. and Daniel Smith for Larry and Elsie West. This young man right here uh, is. Uh, she sent me a video the other day. He's fixing to start showing a three-year-old filly. Uh -huh. And I'm here to tell you now, now look good, look real good. But he, he just sets a saddle to me. Oh, yeah. He reminds me of a trainer. Yeah. And, and I can, just the way he sets the saddle. I told him, I said, when you cut that hair, I didn't recognize you. And Elf said she didn't either. <laughs> I tell you what, now Daniel's fine young man. Yeah. He really is. Super good kid. Draw a line and Robert right there, draw a line and Robert. No, this first time he showed yeah. me. He just bought this horse. That's a nice horse. Yes, it is. That was his first time out on it. First time out. He has a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got this smile on his face, mm -hmm. too. Right here, quite an honor. I tell you what, I love that mare. Oh, yeah. We got some great mares now. Now let's take a look at our 
Jack Sam does a super good job of riding this horse. Oh, yeah. Quite an honor, and Maxine Beasley for Beth Beasley of Athens, Alabama. Quite an honor, and Maxine Beasley as a, are our youth champions here tonight. Maxine, she, her and her sister, I mean, they one of a kind now. Oh, yeah. They're special. They, they really are. are. Some nice young ladies. Right there, Tea Time Charlie and Allie Jo Jacobs. Tea Time Charlie, Allie Jo Jacobs and Jake Jacobs. Are the I never tell you what she told her daddy when they was doing that pro am, and uh, she, he said, "Well, you go the first one." She said, "Nope." She said, "Pro goes the second <laughs> way." <laughs> she, said, she, she let him know right quick she yeah. was pro in that family. This horse here was real good. He was impressive. Well, that's okay. supposed to be Charlie's, uh, Jake's horse. But uh -huh. he's already told me that Tea Time Charlie was now Allie Joe's, Allie Joe's mm -hmm. horse. So she done took him. That's the way it goes. When, when you got a young girl in the family that can flat ride. Yeah. My daughter took one of my cars. <laughs> so it's only right that she takes his horses. Yeah. All right, now we're going to go to walking for cancer. That was a good show. That was a good that show. That was a good show. We, uh, Sam Sara was the judge at this show yeah. right here. Ghost entry number 554, Da Hoss. Right there she is again. Da Hoss. Da Hoss. And Ali Jo Jacobs for the Jacobs family. Two shows in a row over there. Da Hoss. I don't know who named it. But that, that was a good name. Yeah, it was a good name. Give her a smile, she'll smile back. It's Allie Joe Jenkins aboard the Hoss. And the Blue Ribbon winner here tonight in Shelbyville. The Hoss. On the Jacobs family history of Murfreesboro. I, I love to watch her ride. I really do. She wouldn't weigh 100 pounds if you put a ton of rocks yeah. in her pocket. And she rides real well. Oh, she does. Sets that saddle. Doral. Right there's Doral and Samantha Green and Wayne Wilson for Evergreen Walking Horse Farm. And Samantha Green and Wayne Wilson. That's a that's a real nice horse here. Yes, he is. And Samantha, she does a real good job. Guido does a good job. The real, um, Samantha finna start a new school, the Cartwright School there in Chevyville. Mm -hmm. she, yep, she's gonna be a teacher over there. So we got all kinds of people that show these horses, school teachers, lawyers. Lawyers, physicians. Doctors. Psychiatrists. Yep. Look here, title defense and Samantha Green for the Evergreen Walking Horse Farm. Tell you what, this horse right here has been a winning circle. Oh, yeah, he has. He has been a bunch. Floral horse you and all for title defense and Samantha Green riding for the Evergreen Walking Horse Farm of Bell Buckle. So proud for Miss Virginia. Oh, she I loved them been. horses. We won. We went to lunch the other day and had a long talk about a lot of different things. Zorro Jr. and Beth Beasley, owner of Beth Beasley. This, this horse right here, piece of work now. Yeah. He just, he's a good one. He's a good horse. Beth and her girls. Yep. That, that's all mm -hmm. you can say, Beth and her girls. All right, well, I guess we can, uh, you can do your thing. We'll be right back after these messages. During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. 
Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee Walking Horse Champion. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. All righty. We're going to go up to uh, Cookville, Tennessee, and look at some horses that uh, my buddy Dick Peoples was the judge up there. How'd he do? He done pretty good. He done he pretty good. good. He done pretty good. He We're going to pat you on the back. Yeah. Right here is your yearling class. It was. Three yearlings in this. Mighty mischievous. Jackson Latham took the blue for Shane Porterfield. Maker's Fatal Touch and Billy Howard and Mr. Duke Ellington, Annette England. Finished out the ribbons. I'm gonna tell you, that's a real good place to have a horse show. I mean, big arena. I mean, it is good nice. stands. I mean, it is. We went up there and show Sly. Uh, when he was a two-year-old, and uh, John Allen Calloway was the judge. Okay. Right there he is, mighty mischievous in Jackson Latham for Shane Porterfield, your yearling class winner. Well, I was going to tell you, there was, uh, I forget how many classes they had, but they had a bunch of people really liked Dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody won a blue ribbon, said boy hold dick. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. Amateur 15, two and under class. This was a good class. Yeah. There's some good horses in there. Cousin Bob Shane Porterfield took the blue. Good time, Charlie. And Casey Slagle, the reserve. The Texas lineman, Dr. Steve Powers. I'm Charlie. Cheryl Mark Markham. And the American mobster, Linda Shrivner, finished out the ribbons. But Cousin Bob put on a oh, show. Yeah. Man, he looked good. I, yeah. I, I thought he looked real good. Shane does a good job with Shane him. does a real good job. That's a nice horse. Yes, he is. He can get it done. Yeah. Shane's setting the saddle too. Oh, yeah. Man. There's Linda.
That's a nice one. That is a nice one. Mm -hmm. The only thing out if when it if it's raining real bad, it, it's oh yeah. Rough. Cousin Bob and Shane Porterfield. Far Shane. That's Porterfield. a good horse right there. Fifteen two and under winner. Shane does a good job riding that horse. Yes, he does. Well, you got to give Tanner some credit too. Oh yeah. Because Tanner gets that horse ready for him. That means a lot. Yeah. They're the Dixie Giant and Jackson Latham for Shane Porter. They just got that horse. And if, if get this, they made a car trade for him. Okay. And I told Shane, I said, well, Shane, I think you got the best end of the deal because <laughs> he said it was an older car. Yeah. <laughs> but that that's, horse right there is only five years old. That's and a nice he, horse. I see him. see it. Real nice. Show that horse up there. Real nice. Jackson does a good job. Yeah. The Dixie Giant. What more can you get? That's right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we that's our show for this week. But, but I do want to remind everybody, video your inspections. Yes. Don't don't let the government just run roughshod over you, especially the the VMOs. We we've got laws and we've got we've got our rights but video the inspections and eventually the USDA will be held accountable for what they do. I mean, they, they know what that they're way out of hand, that they're way overboard, they know it. If they didn't, they wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be recreating these violations. Yeah. They would actually be finding legitimate violations. It's just like checking a horse because he has a good back end. That, that makes no sense at all. We don't, I wouldn't intentionally hurt the back end of my horse for nothing. I mean, that, that's an important part that's of our horse, horse, the way they walk. But they say we intentionally do that because we train them to walk. Well, sir was, I mean, was going, the baby was walking on his right. butt. But I didn't create it. That, I mean, it was just the, the way it is. And I just wish they'd, I just wish they'd be more honest and more ethical, ethical yeah. in what they're doing. That, that's all. And I mean, we're we're a country that should demand that from everybody, especially government employees. That that's what gets me is they think because they work for the government, they can do whatever they want to do. Yeah, and and, and it that's not right. I think they they need to be a help held accountable for what they do. You are exactly and, right uh, about that. I wish more show managers would do it because they, they, they're they supposed to follow the law the same as we are. If they don't, then they need to suffer the consequences the same as we would. Show managers be the back there in them inspections. That's it. Just yep. be back there, watch them, and when they get out of hand, let them know. You're yep. either going to do it right or you're hitting the road, period. And I, and I believe that can be enforced. I yep. truly do. I believe it can be enforced as long as you're right. Yeah, be Thank safe. And have be a good safe. Weekend. See you next week. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.